Howdy there everybody, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs and this is the video review of the TDK ST800 headphones which retail for a whopping $299 but can be had for as little as $130 on Amazon and other online resellers. Now, TDK was a company that I didn't have any idea was still making things. You know, I the last thing I bought from TDK was probably a cassette, but I was interested to see that they were branching into headphones and wanted to give these a shot. And so TDK sent over a pair for review and I appreciate that. So thank you to them for that. But I wanna talk about these headphones and unfortunately not all is good on the TDK side of things. Now. Let's talk about the headphones themselves. The build quality, as you can see, is already pretty good, and it looks pretty nice. One thing that does bother me quite a bit is the plastic right here on the ear cups looks a little bit cheap up close, but other than that, they do really look pretty sharp. Um, a lot of people might find this gold gaudy. I think it's just on the verge of going overboard. I think it looks really great as it is, but anymore, then it would be a little bit overboard. But right now I like it. It has this stitched leather, which looks really, really sharp. And uh, I think it just looks really pretty awesome. You have these aluminum hinges and the build quality is uh, very, very good as well. Um, is it as good as competing headphones like the Fanny Wang, other headphones in this price range? Probably not, but they seem pretty durable as they are. Now, they are heavy and they are big and that is something that I don't like about the TDK 800s or ST 800s. I feel like they could have slimmed down the size on these a little bit. Uh, the cups sit really, really far away from your head, which looks a little bit goofy when you're in public with these. Now, that's the build quality. What is the special features of these headphones? Well, it's this little bizarre built-in equalizer. Now, this is the plug that heads, or excuse me, this is the end that plugs into our source. This is just a one fourth inch adapter I've been using. And the cable itself is about three feet long and it is this braided nylon. Now they do include an eight, or excuse me, a 12 foot long extension cord, which is very nice to see. But uh, really there's not a whole lot in this forefront. This jack right here is not recessed, which is a little bit of a bummer. So most iPhone cases with recessed headphone jacks will not play nicely with these headphones. And that is something you're going to want to note. This is the equalizer, and this is what makes these headphones stand out from the rest of its competitors. If we power these on right here with the on and off switch, we can see in a couple of seconds that this little equalizer comes on, and it's very, very hard to see. So I'm gonna try and optimize, here we go. Let's try and get this ready to go. You can see that there's a couple lines right there. And once we get playing music, you'll be able to recognize it a little bit more thoroughly. But what we can do is click one of these buttons and it allows us to modulate the equalizer on these headphones. So it doesn't allow you to change the mids. It's just bass and treble. You can either give it a little bit more oomph or you can take it down a couple notches and recess it. Um, and that was pretty nice to see. It's not super effective. I mean, you go all the way up in the bass and you will notice an increase in bass, but it's nothing too exponential. Alternatively, when you go up in treble or down in treble, you're not going to notice a huge difference. It is present, but I was always rocking it pretty much on a flat EQ because that's how it seemed to sound best. If I did change it, it was to get rid of some of the bass. Now, Let's talk about the sound itself because I'm afraid it's not all that excellent. Um, it does do a pretty good job at working with most genres. However, I feel like it comes short in a couple of areas. Um, on a portable device like an iPhone, the volume needs to be cranked all the way up on the iPhone to even get the slightest bit of sound because inside of these headphones, there are two massive 50 millimeter drivers, which are huge, unprecedented in headphones this price range. And I kind of wonder why it was that uh, TDK decided that this was a good idea because they're really, really difficult to drive. And on an iPhone and other devices, you need to crank the volume all the way up. Additionally, you need to crank the volume up on the device itself. When the EQ is turned on, there's a couple of things on the headphones that work. This knob spins and it is volume control, volume up and volume down. It just spins infinitely. And you'll notice here on the uh, equalizer, you can see that little bar moving. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I hope you can. It's a little bar that moves and that tells you the volume level on the headphones themselves. Additionally, there's a mute button that you can press, just like the Beats by Dre Studios that will meet the, uh, mute the sound temporarily. Um, you know, when the EQ is turned off, none of these features work, and I feel like when the EQ is turned off, the sound is better if you're in the proper environment. Like I said, on an iPhone, it needs to be cranked all the way up, but there's a caveat to this. These headphones distort at incredibly low volumes. 
if the source is loud. So you need to use the headphone volume knob instead of the source volume knob, which is probably not something you're used to. Additionally, the EQ doesn't play nice with high powered sources like the Roku uh, or the Fio amplifiers or you know, really any desktop amplifier. So that is something you're going to want to note and something that I found slightly disappointing. The headphones are essentially worthless without this EQ because as they have a 200 ohm impedance, which is massive off the scale, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, but they require a ton of power to drive. And so you need a really, really, really big amp to get them to sound good. There's barely any sound stage. It sounds like there's pillows in between your ears and the actual cushions. Mids and highs sound unimpressive. They're seriously dark and and they're warm with low stuff drowning out the mids and the highs and the equalizer doesn't really fix any of that. It just distorts at lower volumes rather than really resolve any of the issues. Isolation is okay, but they leak like mad. So not a lot of sound comes in, but tons of sound comes out. So if you're in public, everyone's gonna hear what you're listening to. Some people don't care about this, but it's something you're certainly going to want to be aware of. Now, when the EQ was off and they were plugged into my WA6, my $600 desktop amplifier, they actually sounded really quite good but it took a lot to get these to sound good. In a normal environment where you're gonna be using this around town on your iPhone, your iPod, your Zoom, your iPad, you name it, it's not going to sound as good as competing headphones because there's simply not enough power in both the device you're powering and the equalizer and the headphones themselves, the battery compartment is right here, to power. It just, there's not enough oomph in these headphones to get them to sound good unless you're in a really really optimal setup which quite honestly you're not going to have and again for that price range you can find other headphones that are better for a desktop style setup with an open back so all in all i'm unimpressed with these headphones for a few dollars more you can pick up the sure srh840 the audio technica atm50 which destroy these in basically every sense of the word and for a lot less you can still get better sound with the uh you know the sennheiser hd448 the cost pro dj100 the list goes on. I honestly cannot recommend these at all. They're a good idea. I'm proud of TDK for giving it a shot. They gave some uh, unique ideas and implementations, but I think it's just gimmicky. And in the long run, you're going to be a lot better off with a more prestigious headphone. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. The TDK ST800 get an unfortunate Snazzy Labs denied. No. <laughs> <laughs> not snazzy demerit. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.